My name is Phineas Nkau. I am from Orbit TVET College. Today I am going to be offering Applied Accounting Level 2, how to enter transactions from source documents into your cash receipts journal and your cash payments journal. Remember, when you receive a question, it will have cash register rolls, it might have receipts, it will have deposit slips and it will have check counterfeits and the remaining of the source documents. Your job is to take all of that information and put it inside of your journals that you will have been given. In Applied Accounting Level 2, at least your journals are going to be given to you so you don't have to start writing them or designing them from scratch. I have in front of me cash register rolls, receipts and your deposit slips which you are going to use in order to enter all the information you need into the cash receipts journal. And then I have also my check counterfeits which you are going to use to enter information into your cash payments journal. I'm going to be starting first, remember, in the CRJ and in all of your journals, you must enter your transactions in date order, meaning the first transaction that took place during the month is the one that goes first into your, C, um, into your journal. Remember as well, what I usually tell my students is that your source documents basically give you all the information that you need in order to enter into your journals. Your journals pretend that they are a table in which you have to enter your information. So you will take all of the information that is in your source documents as it is, they provide all the information that you need and you will enter them in each relevant column of your CRJ, CPJ and so forth. When I look at my transactions, I've got duplicate receipts. The first one starting on the 1st of September 2015, that will be receipt number 313. It says it's a loan from APSA Bank, 50,000 Rand. Let's enter that into the CRJ. Your document number is going to be 313. The date is going to be on the first. Remember, we've already indicated over there the month. Your details, it's a loan from APSA Bank. So you will say APSA Bank. And then that's 50,000 rand that's supposed to be entered into analysis of receipts. And then you also take that amount and put it into your bank. Then after that, you will look after bank. It is all your additional columns that you have opened inside of your CRJ. If this loan does not have a column in which to enter that amount, you will then take it to sundries it is a loan from the bank. Your amount is going to be 50,000 and your details is going to be loan. I'm only because of uh, uh, time going to be doing a few transactions in the CRJ, a few transactions in the CPJ, and I will continue on from there. The next transaction is on the 7th of the uh, on the 7th of the month, receipt number 314. Receipt number 314. Under document number, the date is the 7th. And then the transaction says rent from Eastern Carpet, 3,400. I'm going to, under details, enter Eastern Carpet. The amount is then 3,004, which you put under analysis of receipts. And then you will take that amount to, um, you will take that amount to the next column. Now, before we do that, we must remember that you've been given your deposit slips. I've got in front of me three deposit slips, DS21, 22, and 23. Remember the job of your deposit slips are to help you so that you know when you should put an amount under the column bank. It is not every day that we bank. The deposit slips are going to assist us to be able to know on which days we are going to then take money to the bank. Deposit slip number one was for 50,000 Rand on the 1st of September. The next one is on the 9th of September. Now, if we look at this transaction, it says the 7th. 
So we need to ask ourselves, am I going to put now money inside of the bank if I didn't bank on the 7th? Because my deposit slip says I banked on the 9th. The answer to that is then no. So for this particular transaction, I am not going to have an amount under bank. I'm going to then continue with the transaction. It's a rent from Eastern Carpets. There is no additional column open for rent, so I'm gonna take it straight to sundries, 3,400, and that is rent. But I'm not done there, because we do teach in Applied Accounting Level 2, you must indicate whether that is a rent expense or rent income. It's in the CRJ, money that has been received, so that is going to be rent income. Please remember to do that as well for your activities, tests, assignments, and the examination. The last transaction I'm going to enter as an example is a cash register roll, so that you can know um, how to continue from when you didn't bank and how to enter a transaction uh, talking about a transaction from a cash register roll. That transaction took place on the 9th. It is document number CRR222. So my document number is going to be CRR222. The date for that was the 9th. What was happening there? Cash register roll in accounting says to us that we have sold. So these will be my general sales. So I will then say there, cash analysis of receipts, 15,402. Now, this 15,412 is also indicated for us on deposit slip number D is double two. This deposit slip is the one that is assisting us to know when we should bank. This deposit slip has got 15,412 indicated on it as well as the 3,400. Now, that helps you so that you can remember that I didn't bank the 3,004. I must now bank on the 9th, the two amounts together. The total indicated on that deposit slip was 18,812. 18, so that's the only amount that I indicate on the bank for those two transactions because that's what happened on the deposit slip. That 15,412 was general sales. So I sold, I'm going to put the same amount under sales. Remember with sales comes again your cost of sales. And remember for this transaction, the markup is 75% on cost. I'm gonna show you quickly how to calculate that. The formula is you take your sales and you multiply by 100, divide by 100 plus the markup. Then that will give you your cost of sales. For this transaction, your formula will be 15,412 times 100, divide by 175, that answer will be 8807. We'll take that amount and then enter it as cost of sales, 8807. And then for that transaction, we are done. So those are a few examples of how to enter transactions into the CRJ. I'm now going to move out of the CRJ and enter a few transactions inside of your CPJ. For that, you need to look at your check counterfoils. Those are the source documents that you use to enter transactions into the CPJ. I will take a few examples. Check counterfoil number 465, it happened on the 11th. Remember, enter transactions in date order. Document number 465, this check counterfoil was issued on the 11th. The name of the payee was Computers Premier. So I'm gonna enter that information there. Then that check was 250 Rand and it was issued for repairs. So I will enter 250 in the column bank. Then I check my additional columns that I had to open. There's no repairs there. And if there's no additional column, remember you go to sundries and you put in 250, that check was issued 
to that company for repairs. The next example I will make is with check counterfoil number 466. Check counterfoil number 466 was a cash check issued for wages 2,500. This was issued on the 14th. So I will enter document number 466. The date for that was the 14th. This was a cash check that was issued for wages. The amount was 2,500. If we look at our additional columns, there's no wages, so I will take it straight to sundries, 2,500, and the details for that is wages. Let's try to find, oh, let's do the next one, which is a very popular one. Transaction number, uh, on check counterfoil number 467, this was issued to Bay Lounge Furniture, and this was to pay our account, 7,700. The date for that was the 21st. My document number was 467. This was a check issued to Bay Lounge Furniture. Sorry. Bay Lounge Furniture, the amount on the check was 7,700. And if we look at our, remember it is a check issued to Bay Lounge Furniture to pay our account 700. When we pay an account, it means that we had borrowed money or we had bought items on credit. So we are paying actually our creditors. 7,007, can't go to trading stock, we will take it to creditors control because we were paying an account. So those are a few examples of how to enter transactions into the CPJ. Remember, your CPJ is going to take all of your check counterfoils. Your check counterfoils are source documents when you, um, that you fill out when you were issuing a check. Checks are issued to pay other um, suppliers or to pay for your expenses. Your CRJ, was um, your cash register rolls for when you were selling, your receipts for when you were receiving money, and you use your deposit slips in order to know when it is, uh, when it is the day to bank. We will then uh, continue with the creditors journal. That's for when you buy from your suppliers on credit. Creditors allowances journal, when you return to your suppliers whom you bought from on credit. Your debtors journal, when you sell to your customers on credit. Your debtors allowances journal, when your customers who bought on credit have returned. And the last journal, your general journal, for all your additional sundry transactions. Let's start with your creditors journal. Remember, for the creditors journal, you need to be looking at your original credit invoices. Original, not duplicate, there's a difference. Your original credit invoices are received from your suppliers when you purchase, and your duplicate credit invoices are remain with you after you issue the original to your, uh, to your customers whom you have sold to on credit. So I have in front of me now original credit invoice, EF623, which was uh, received on the 3rd of September. So I'm gonna enter that into the creditor's journal. Document number 623. The date for that is the 3rd of September. Your creditor was Pagamani Stationery. You were buying stationery and a printer, and they give you two amounts there, 120 for the stationery and 899 for the printer. So the creditor is Pagamani Stationery. So I will enter that under creditor. Creditor's control is the whole amount. The 120 was stationery, and the 899 was printer. Under Creditors control, you will enter the whole amount. 120 plus 899 is 1019, 1019. You are buying from them stationery and you also bought a printer. So to enter them, you must separate them. That's why they gave you the two different amounts as separate. So we'll take the 120 for stationery, skip the trading stock column, 120 for stationery, and your printer, which you have bought from the same company with the same credit invoice, will go under sundries, 899, 
and that will be your, a printer is classified in accounting as your equipment. So we'll write the details there as equipment. So that's the only example I will then make from the C, uh, CJ, the creditor's journal. The next original credit invoice I am going to insert is BH1234. It's an original credit invoice that was issued on the 23rd of September to Bay House Furniture and we were buying merchandise or goods. So this BH1234, one, two, three, four. The date for that was 23. The creditor was Bay House Furniture. And then we had bought merchandise or goods for 27,000. So I'll put 27,000 there. And then this was for merchandise or goods. Merchandise and goods are also known as your trading stock. So there is a column for trading stock. I will then put in the 27,000 there then you are done with the creditor's journal. We will now move on to entering transactions in the creditor's allowances journal. For that, we will use your duplicate debit notes. There's only one, DC25, issued on the, or received on the 29th of September 2015. This was from Bay House Furniture for an amount of 3002 the reason for that is trade discount was omitted on invoice BH1234. If we think back to creditor's journal, there's BH1234. It means we were supposed to receive a credit uh, discount on this, um, uh, on this transaction, and then they omitted it, so we've gone back to them, and now they must uh, implement that credit invoice, I mean that discount then on that uh, credit invoice. So, the creditor's allowances journal will input DC25 on the 29th of September. The creditor, remember, it's from this invoice, so the creditor is the same, Bay House Furniture. And they are discounting for us on that invoice, 3,200. This was trade discount omitted on invoice BH1234. That was for trading stock. So I'm going to then use the trading stock column to then record that transaction. We are done now with the creditor's allowances journal. We'll move on to the DJ and the DAJ. And for that, we will look at duplicate credit invoices. Duplicate. Remember, the original went with the customer when we sold to them, and we remain with the duplicate. The first one that we have is invoice JJ125. It is a duplicate credit invoice that we have kept and issued the original to K. Darren. They were buying a dining room set. Remember, we are a furniture selling business. So in the DJ, document number will be JJ125. We issued this invoice on the 4th of September. The data was K. Darren. We sold to him for 12,000. 12,000, remember, whenever we sell, we have a markup in, uh, to consider. So we sold to him for 12,000. The calculation, I will quickly do it here to show you and remind you how we calculate your cost of sales amount. 12,000 times 100 divided by 100 plus the markup of 75% that I spoke about earlier on. The answer for that is 6857, and we will put that in as cost of sales. That is one of our duplicate credit invoices. I will just do one more quickly. JJ126, and this was given to Karen or Kzoid on the 17th of September. Kzoid. The amount on that invoice was 8,000. We take that amount to sales. Then we quickly calculate your cost of sales, 8,000 using the same formula, times 100 divided by 175. It will give you 4,571. And that is your cost of sales amount, 4,571. And that's how you do transactions for the data's journal. 
We'll move on to the debtors allowances journal. And for that, you will look at your duplicate credit notes. Remember, these are issued to our customers that had bought on credit and are now returning for some reason. The first one that we have there is DR71, issued on the 19th of September to KZOID. The amount is 1,000, one chair not ordered by the customer. So we gave KZOID the wrong chair. KZOID, if we remember correctly, is a customer that we sold to on the 17th. Now on the 19th, they have reported that we gave them the wrong chair. 19th document number DR71. The data is KZOID. And that was for 1,000. So that check cost 1,000. We are now crediting her uh, account with 1,000 and the cost of sales for that calculated quickly. 1,000 times 100 divided by 175 will give us 571. Then we insert that amount under cost of sales as 571. The last journal we are going to be doing is your general journal. Remember, the general journal is for all your additional transactions that don't fit into all your other journals. They are not cash related, so they can't go in the CRJ or CPJ. They are not credit related, so they can't go into the DJ, DAJ, or CJ and CAJ. So you will put them into the general journal. You notice them in your question paper. They call them sundry transactions, or they will give you an office memo. Uh, and then you will use that or a general journal voucher and you will use that source document to enter transactions into the general journal. The next journal we are going to do is your general journal. Remember the general journal is for all the other transactions that don't fit into uh, the first journals that you have completed. The first one that we are going to be dealing with there is on the 5th of September. Transaction details say, a credit purchase of goods from Bay House Furniture was wrongly credited to the account of Bay World Traders. Now, if we read it correctly, it says a credit purchase, meaning we are the ones that bought the goods from another, um, from another supplier, but it was wrongly credited to another account. So if you wrongly credited, in order to correct it, you must then debit. We wrongly credited it to the account of Bay World Trader. So that's the account we are going to debit in order to correct it. The transaction took place on the 5th. The general journal, remember, is not like all the other journals where you've got the day and the uh, name of the credit and so forth. Here in the general journal, you must immediately indicate which account you are going to debit in the first line and which account you are going to credit in the second line and then continue entering the amounts from there. Details, account debited is the wrongly credited one. Bay World Traders. And then the account credited is the one that was supposed to be credited in the first place. Bay House Furniture. So you write it below that. Now, in the first two columns, you are going to indicate amounts according to how you debited and credited. The first one is the account you are going to debit. So for that, you are going to enter the amount of 10,000 rand given under debit because this is the account that you have debited. Bay House Traders, Bay House Furnitures, excuse me, you are going to, it was an account credited, so you are going to enter the amount under the credit column. You are dealing with creditors, not debtors. You've got space to indicate under debtors control if you are going to debit or credit those amounts. You've got space to indicate under creditors control if you are going to debit or credit. We are dealing with creditors. So we are going to go under the creditors column and we will do the same thing that we have done there because we've debited one creditor and credited another. 10,000 under debit and 10,000 under credit over there. I'm going to do one last transaction on the 12th of September. 12th of September. The transaction detail says you must add interest to the account of data 
D B Desmond. When you are adding interest to an account, that means you are increasing that debtor's account. So remember, debtors um, are supposed to increase on the debit side. This is now knowledge from your accounting equation. So our data is B Desmond, which we enter as the account uh, debited, and we are going to credit the interest account. Interest account is an income. So we are going to then, remember all your incomes are then credited on the right hand side. So because we are increasing interest, we are going to credit the interest account. So we'll write there, interest, please be specific here and say it's interest income or interest received. The amount was given as 47 rand. B, Desmond is the account debited, so we'll then say 47 over there. And your interest income is the account credited, so under credit, you will also say 47. Remember the transaction says, add interest to the account of data. So we'll go under debtors, um, the debtors columns, and then put 47 rand under debtors control. And that is how an example or examples of how you will then do your journals for Applied Accounting Level 2. Thank you.